Good morning and welcome to the Dittenworks YouTube channel. Today I'm going to talk about amplifiers. I don't normally get involved with amplifiers because my philosophy for a long time has been I select the source, amplifier, CD player, turntable, and I tend to stick with that for a fairly long period of time and then play about with speakers because that's really my thing. So for 12 years I've been using this which is a Pioneer Air Studios Tune A9 amplifier. Dual mono construction, I'll put some pictures up in a little while, and it served me well for a long time. Now, this does have some drawbacks, this amplifier. It's not particularly powerful. It's 55 watts at eight ohms and 75 watts at four ohms, which meant some of the speakers I owned with more difficult impedance loans or not particularly efficient, this amplifier couldn't always deliver. So I had a toss up between a few different amplifiers within that 12 year window. Um, a Roxanne Candy K2, which this blew out of the water, and another amplifier that I'm gonna talk about in a minute. Now, this has been my amplifier for 12 years. I've had it for new, and I used it with the matching Air Studios Pioneer CD player. And I still use that CD player in my system now. So the system I use now has been carefully configured to be as neutral as it can be. So when I change a pair of speakers, I can really detect the differences in the speakers and know the equipment is not really adding much to the sound. Now, this was fairly good at that, presented an enormously wide sound stage. It was very musical and very good to listen to, but it didn't have the most wallop. Some of that is down to being a low powered amp, but it just didn't have the bass response of what I'm using now. So what I use now is the matching Pioneer Air Studio C SACD player running through a Benchmark DAC 1, which my friend Chris recommended, brilliant recommendation, balanced XLRs from that into a Quad Artera preamp, and then balanced XLRs from that to a Meridian 557 power amp. And I absolutely love that setup. It gives me a real neutral presentation that I can really switch between speakers and totally analyze what the speaker is doing. But this video is gonna be about amplifiers and how an amplifier can also dramatically affect the sound you're getting from speakers. Now, speakers will change the sound the most if you went from a pair of LS35As to an enormous pair of Celestian A3s. There would be an enormous difference in sound, obviously. but sticking with the same pair of speakers, you can actually get a little bit more, or in some cases less, from the same pair of speakers by changing the amplifier. And the reason I'm gonna try this one today is my Spendor SP2s sound fantastic on my setup, but they, they haven't got the greatest amount of bass response. And that's because my setup's not very warm, it's neutral, it's not hugely detailed, it's not hugely warm, it's neutral. This fell into the detailed category. The amplifier I'm gonna talk about is what I would consider a warm sounding amp. Let's have a look at it. So this is the amplifier we're gonna to discuss today. It's a Musical Fidelity A3 dual mono integrated amplifier. Now this is similar to my old Pioneer. It's called a dual mono construction. So you've effectively got two mono amplifiers built into one chassis and that's a very decent design. It's it's falling into slightly higher than mid-fi really to be honest with you. You're getting a very very good quality construction. It's well thought out design and today I'm going to be using the matching CD player Musical Fidelity A3 CD 24-bit CD player. So let's see how this setup affects the sound of these Spendor speakers. Okay just quickly on the Spendors. This is a Derek Hughes design SP2 Twos, Spendor's own bass driver. This is an outsourced tweeter, but it's exceptionally good and used in many other pairs of speakers. Just quickly on how this is wired up, we've got two Russ Andrews power cables going straight into the CD player and the amplifier, and a QED reference interconnect, which is a nice interconnect lead connecting the CD to the amp, and some reasonable flat copper wire going to the Spendor's. And as this is only a two channel amp, I can't buy wire it. So we've got some uh, silver anniversary link cables connecting the HF and LF terminals on the back of the spendors. 
everything's all set up and ready to go. I'm gonna have to excuse the mess because I've had to half move some of my stuff to fit this in to give it a try. I'm gonna use the uh, Lynn Records Super Audio Volume 2 and I quite like track number seven, so we'll set that there. Always a good idea with an older amplifier or, or a new amplifier to you that's second hand is just check there's no pops or anything when you turn it on. Nothing, silent. There's no horrible hiss, noises, so we know this amplifier is in good condition. Let's head up to track number seven and give it a go. sounds really pleasant. As I know these oh, setups quite well, if I was to quickly summarise, the Pioneer is a little bit more detailed, the Meridian setup sits in the middle and this is quite warm. Now the reason I like this amplifier with these speakers is the Spendors aren't the most bassy speaker. So to complement that and get a little bit more low end out of those speakers, I would like running them with this amplifier. It gives it a bit more warmth a little bit more low end and makes the whole thing sound a little bit more balanced. If I ran this with something that was very warm, very bassy, it would probably be overbearing. So this is what some people call system matching or synergy, that the whole setup is working well together. We could fine tune it further by changing around interconnect wires or speaker wires and really tuning it a bit more. These do sound a little bit better on open frame stands, so that'd be another thing I'd potentially try. But it's just interesting to test the differences, not only between speakers, which I love doing, but seeing what happens if you change the source, the amplifier. So just to quickly summarise, Pioneer, detailed, wide sound stage, not cold, but not particularly warm. The Meridian setup I've got there sort of sits in the middle, very neutral sounding, and this airs on the side of warm, but it doesn't lose any detail as well. It's still there, you're just getting a little bit more warmth. And I really like that about this setup. So that's my little review today, that it is slightly about speakers, it's getting more out of those Spendors. So as a system match, the Musical Fidelity Spendor combination seems to work really well, as where the Proac Meridian or the Celestian Meridian works really, really well. The Celestian Pioneer doesn't work so well. It hasn't got the drive to run those very low or impedance dips and the inefficiency of the Celestian SL600s. But great, great little amplifier. Dual mono construction, 85 watts, got a good amount of punch. And if you could find one of these, I'd strongly recommend it. All right, guys, take care. That's the Ditton Works review for today.